But let us sign ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Holy God, you are Emmanuel, you are God with us. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the retreat. Thank you for all you did. And thank you for the, the seeds planted, Lord, and, the, and the, the blossoms that are going to be so sweet. We pray it will be all for your glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, it, it was a glorious retreat, and they all have been. There's always been uh, renewal. I have three things to tell you today. Number one, most importantly, uh, echoing what uh, uh, Kenny, I almost call him Father Kenny, uh, <laughs> uh, Kenny Lake said, you know, uh, you are in the right place. You are in the right place as a women's Christian fellowship, but as women that are pursuing a life with Jesus Christ. That's the most important element uh, of everything. Okay? You're in the right place, and uh, especially with Scripture. With Scripture, the study of Scripture helps you to combat, you know, both inner healing and uh, spiritual warfare. There is a difference. There's, there's two. That's the second thing. Inner healing is not spiritual warfare. And spiritual warfare many times will, will stem from inner healing. Okay? But the inner healing is different. What Father Greg did, you know, the uh, false judgments, they're symptoms. They're symptoms that attach to some inner hurt. The inner wound is really uh, basically uh, sort of discovered in, in, in early life. Okay? It's not discovered in early life. It's discovered much later. But uh, an inner vow, for instance, is a determination set by the mind and the heart into your entire being. Okay? An inner vow is a determination set by the mind our heart into your being in early life, in early life. And, and many times, you know, the vow that stems from that is a lie. It's a lie. Remember uh, St. Paul, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, says, when I was a child, I did the things of a child. Okay? But when I became a man, I put away the things of a child, and I took on the things of a man. Okay? So especially the inner wound, the wound that we, we, most of us in some way or other have carried throughout our lives. Okay? And, and there comes a time as you progress in your spiritual walk, your spiritual journey, you have to confront that. And it's difficult because you confront the worst part of yourself. But the strength is that you have you know, two or three things, a relationship with Jesus Christ, a hunger for scripture, an awareness of prayer, you know, the reading of the Bible, a community about you. Those are essential if you're going to look at an inner wound. You know, if you try to do it by going to a psychiatrist or a, you know, a psychologist and so forth, many times what's missing is the spiritual. They can explain something to you, but how do I get, how do I get rid of it? Uh, dreams are important too. Okay, I'm going to share a dream with you, but don't come up afterward and say, "Father, I had this dream." Okay? <laughs> uh, my time is limited. Uh, okay. <laughs> this lady wrote to me. And she said she had a dream. She's a single mom, never been married, but she has a son, and uh, the son I think will be about six or seven, maybe at that age. So she had this dream. She was in a room with her boyfriend, her new boyfriend. And uh, her son was with her. And her brother was outside. Outside there was a lady who was homeless. And uh, not a homeless, she wasn't homeless. She was kind of a, a bad woman. And her brother was trying to shoo this woman away. Get rid of this woman. Because she was a threat. And she went out, she looked and she said, oh, she only has half a head. And she said, uh, he was trying to shoo her away. I was trying to protect my son, she said, and my boyfriend didn't know what to do. My brother seemed to know what to do. Could you interpret this for me? I said, yeah, for 20 bucks, I can do that. <laughs> I said, everyone in that dream is you. 
Wow, she said. I said, yeah, it's you. you know? The woman with the half a head is you. Because you're looking for a relationship, okay? But many times you're making the wrong decision. You're making the wrong decision. You're going for, you know, someone who is sort of cool, someone, you know, who's acceptable by other people, but not by you, okay? And the child within you is yourself, the little girl that wants protection at all costs, you know? And the brother is part of you that is strong enough to protect your child, but not yourself, you know? And she said, what's the boyfriend? And I said, you know, basically, he's, he represents some men that have come into your life that have a lot of promise and nothing works out. Now, where does that come from? It comes from an inner wound of some sort or other that she has absorbed in her life or embraced it. The false judgments attach themselves to that inner wound. Okay, to that in the womb. False vows or inner vows come from it. Okay? But both of them are parts of the result of the wound. Okay? The part of the result of the wound. The wound has to be healed, otherwise it's going to lead us into <coughs> evil. Evil things can come, compensations can come in life, you know. Um, like alcoholism, you know, like you know, um, Commitments uh, to other people, you know, other men, other relationships, <coughs> all, <coughs> all sorts of things in life. I had a man who spoke to me two days ago, and he said, you know, I've been married for, um, what's it, 22 years, and uh, I have no feelings for my wife anymore. I don't have any feelings for her. And he said, but this lady who sent me to you, she works with me, he says, and all sorts of things are clicking, are coming together. He says, because um, she lives in a, in a house number 131. He says, and that number has been appearing in my life constantly. I need all the numbers figured out. And it seems that God is putting these numbers to say, click, 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 click. I said, you haven't won the lottery, have you? He said, no. I said, then you don't have the right numbers. <laughs> but that's, that's a plot of the evil one. That's a plot of the evil one. I said, you owe it to this woman. They have three kids. He says, I love my kids. I said, you owe it to this woman to try to do something. He said, oh, you're right. He said, you're right. I said, 22 years is a long time. You know, feelings can come and go. I said, but... Many times, you know, you have to begin to see, are you coming from a womb, you know? And I said, what was your dad like? Well, he was never around. Mm -hmm. He was never around. You know, um, John and Paula Sanford explained things, you know, in their, earth, in, in their lives. They met one another, and they felt crazy in love, and they got married. And she got pregnant, and it almost destroyed the marriage. Because he came from uh, a family, his mother was alcoholic, she was always sick, she was in bed, she was heavy, she was fat, you know. And she came from a family, uh, her father adored her, her father adored her, but he was gone constantly, constantly gone, because he was a traveler. And he would be there on the weekend, but never in the week, you know. So then they got married, and she got fat. And she, wasn't, she was in bed, we tried to carry the baby to term. So she was in bed all the time. So she was his mother, really. Because the house went into, you know, kind of, it was, it was dirty. She wasn't there to cook meals, nothing like that. So he decided he'd only come home when he had to. So it was her father all over again. See, the wounds are there. The wounds resist maturation. When you grow into a, a woman, a young lady, and you get married, all of that, that wound is still back in the little girl stage. Yeah. Little girl stage. Many times, little girls go through a difficult time with their father, okay? They're loved and hugged and, and bounced and everything else until they become about 11 or 12, developing into a young lady. And then the father sort of moves away. Same with a little boy, the opposite. 
Okay, uh, the the, uh, the mother takes over. You know, in my own case, you know, um, my mom was. You know, there was no one in the world like me. Wasn't she a wise woman? <laughs> But it is the man who has to take over, especially in the life of a, of a boy. You know, there's a story told about Rachel, and the birth, the birth of her last child was, was Benjamin. Okay? And she called him Ben-Omi. Ben-Omi, which means what? Son of my sorrow. And Jacob said, no. His, ben, his name will be Ben-Hameen, which means son of my right arm. Mm -hmm. Big difference, okay, uh, with that. So those are wounds that come in. It takes time to heal them. Like I said, you're in the right place because you have the scriptures. The scriptures are very vital, okay, uh, in uh, healing them. Uh, John and Paul Sanford speak about uh, the discipline and training of a prophet. Begin to hear, as and many of you share this morning, wonderful sharing of what God is doing, okay. The good, the acceptable, the will of God. What's God's will? Doesn't want you to struggle with this. It's a healing process that that you go through. That you go through, and uh, the word in prayer, okay, the prayer that's given to you, and especially after your meetings, your regular meetings, when you line up for prayer, that's that's vital. That's important. Okay, that's very important that you you get you know you avail yourself of that. Now, when it comes to evil, okay, when it comes to spiritual warfare, I told you there's there's five ways. There's repression, you know, depression, oppression, obsession, and possession. Okay, uh, the last three, okay, uh, repression, okay, especially, uh, you know, having to do with with priests. When we're trained to be priests, okay, we were trained. I remember uh, very vividly at a conference. When we're going in the seminary, because in uh, New Hampshire, where we, we stayed, there was a mountain. That was all. It was only a mountain. Every morning we got up, looked at the mountain. You know, every time we go to bed, we couldn't see it, but it was there. And that was the thrill of a lifetime, to have a mountain in your backyard. <laughs> yeah. and especially as men developing and the hormones kicking in, you know, and... Uh, Every first Sunday, we'd have visitors. We didn't have any visitors because we were from Ireland. Nobody came to visit, you know. So we were there, but the American guys would have visitors. They'd have sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and sisters would come. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were told that, you know, if you were, because we were up, up, upstairs, the priests were on the lower floor. We had four four uh, stories in that building. And if, you're, and if you looked out at one of these girls, it was a sin. And if you went to the window and looked out, that was a sin. And then if you thought that you thought you would go to the window to do it, that was a sin. <laughs> so what the heck, hey, let's go to the window. <laughs> But you see what it was doing? We were repressing. We were repressing things that were good within us, but they were being flipped around. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They were being flipped around. And, you know, there was a struggle that, you know, went on constantly. In the, That's repression. When you get angry and upset with your spouse, okay, and you push it down, and you don't deal with it, maybe you can't deal with it there and then, but, you know, you have to deal with it one way or another. In one way or another, it has to be dealt with, okay? And otherwise, it will, you know, it will open a door, some type of door, for some type of relief, some type of relief to happen, to sort of take care of all of those feelings that are going on, you know? And, and one of the blessings that you have that you may not see, but many times that your husband does, doesn't have, is your emotional life. You know, emotional life. I got a letter or an email from Mexico recently saying that a couple that are very devoted to one another, they have three adult children, and uh, they're going through a tough time because emotionally she's dying. 
she's dying and he figures, well, it's a woman's problem. Yes, it is, but it's everybody's problem. There are times when we need to get emotional or to allow our emotions to flow. And then you have depression, you know, when you get down and just things are too much. Things are too much, you know. So these can open doors, open doors for us. And not so much the depression as such, but sometimes the remedy that we have, the, the solution that we have, you know. And then there's oppression, when definitely because of the state that you're in, okay, the state that you're in, that is a woman of God, a woman of faith, a woman who is moving toward God, there will, the, the force of evil will come against you. You know, be sober, be alert, because the devil goes around like a, a, a roaring lion, prowls, you know, looking, looking for you to, to really get a hold, get some type of hold. Okay? And then there's obsession. When we get obsessed with things, with situations, you know, in life, you know, um, obsessed. We're obsessed, you know, uh, we have people who get into, um, you know, pornography. I was just listening on the uh, radio this morning coming down uh, about pornography, you know, that it's, it's deadly. It injures the whole community. It injures the whole community, not just the individual, you know, not just the man who's watching it, but it destroys marriages and, and so forth, and people are obsessed with it, they cannot give it up. They cannot give it up. Even though it's in a home where people will sit, go to church and do all of that thing, you know, it's, it's an open door for the evil one to come in. And what happens as a result of that is, you know, maybe a breakdown in marriage, maybe an anger that uh, a man has that, you know, it, I can't handle this anger. I, can't, I, I just take off from the house, you know, and pray that he'll be okay when I get back, you know, and stuff like that. There has to be, what Father Greg was trying to say in those situations, a deliverance. And a deliverance that may not happen once, but may have to happen many times, you know. May have to have it happen many times because, you know, I'm losing my hair, you know. But I still have to get a haircut, you know. <laughs> so it's that type of approach that, yeah, good things can happen, but are you ever free, you know. And especially with the, with the inner wound too. The inner wound is not evil, but it can lead to evil. The inner wound is personal. It's a relationship that you need to bring <coughs> Jesus Christ into it so that you and the Lord can do it. You know, and usually some other trusted friend okay, to be on that journey. And that journey cannot be uh, finished with one session with Women's Christian Fellowship. It may take a while. But the other thing that the evil one can do is say, you know what, Women's Christian Fellowship isn't doing anything for you. It's not doing anything for you. You're wasting Thursday morning. You know, you could be in bed, you know, you could be doing this, you could be doing that. So that's the way the evil one will come in. Break down your strengths. That's the first thing he has to do. And you have to realize that, you know, you see, breaking down my strength. Like this man that came to me talking about, uh, you know, his wife, no feelings for her. <coughs> do you go to church? No, I, I, I don't. I, well, I go once a year. I said, let me know when that time, that must be a wonderful time. Yeah. <laughs> Once a year, you know, that's like magic. You're hoping that it'll happen. You know? So, again, evil is much more present or prevalent than we know. And we know. Other symptoms we had, you know, I told you about the slumbering spirit. The spirit that has not or has or has not been awakened really, to the saving power of Jesus Christ. You're the redeemed of the Lord. You're the redeemed of the Lord. You know, hasn't been awakened to that. Okay. Um, also, um, burden bearing. You know what burden bearing is? You take on the burden of your husband. You take on the burden of your children. You take on the burden of someone you're praying for. You know. That's why every time there's a cleansing prayer, because the burden that, you know, say, this person's going through a tough time, really difficult time, 
poor person, the poor this, poor that, and the whole thing. And pretty soon, you have that burden on you. You have that burden on you. You can come out of a, a prayer session praying with someone, and you're exhausted. Yeah. You're tired, mm -hmm. okay? And then you get a cough and a cold. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what he called it has written, uh, written a book, John and Paula Sanford, called the, the Elijah Task. Uh, so they have done more work in this. Uh, Father Gray quoted uh, Francis McNutt, but they have done more than, than Francis has done. Okay. You know what the Elijah Task is? No. Hmm? No. Did you teach them anything? <laughs> <laughs> What did Elijah do? He prayed, spoke prophecy, and prayed for the entire language. Huh? He prayed, and God can have. Now listen, listen, and I'll tell you. Oh, okay. Remember, a teacher who just get mad and I'm just like, didn't he kill the prophets of Baal? Yes. Didn't he kill the evil? He destroyed the evil, yeah. and what did he have to do? Run for his life. Yeah. That's the Elijah task, to sort of destroy the evil for our, in, that comes into us, that attacks us, okay? That attacks us. How did he destroy it? By the power of, of God. But Yahweh his God. Yahweh his God. You know, and he wasn't afraid of the evil. He was afraid afterward for his own life. So the Elijah task is to begin to recognize things like stony hearts, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't feel anything, you know, a stony heart. Ezekiel says what? I will remove your stony hearts mm -hmm. and give you hearts of flesh. Hearts of flesh is what God creates us with, okay? Mm -hmm. Hearts of flesh. And to be able to understand, you know, the other day uh, this uh, lady came to me, she was talking about all sorts of things that happened to her, you know, and, and again, to be able to recognize the evil, but not to be afraid of the evil. One good thing you should do, and I would recommend this highly, is the litany of Dawn, the litany of Ellie, the litany of um, Susan, the litany of Karen, the litany of Angie. What is the litany of Angie? Lord, I thank you for my life. Lord, I thank you for Women's Christian Fellowship. Lord, I thank you for allowing me to teach. Lord, thank you. That'd be a long list. If it's a short list, go back and do it again. <laughs> but to be aware you know, of the presence, the ongoing presence of Jesus Christ in your life. Lord, I thank you for my husband. I thank you, you know, for us being together. I thank you for our spiritual bond. That's the difficulty with premarital sex. There's no spiritual bond. There's no commitment. You know, I love you, honey, but people who are committed to one another, how great is that sacrament? You know, at one time, the sacrament of holy orders was above that. <laughs> but it was corrected. It was corrected by Vatican II, and even before that. Because the commitment of the souls and the spirits, especially the spirits of man to woman and woman to man, okay, is really sacred. It's sacred. So, uh, again, to, you know, especially when I hear things about, you know, uh, I don't have any feelings for her, you know, then there's something. <laughs> He's opened a door somewhere or other along the way. Somewhere or other along. So to see that, and when those come in, especially with obsession, obsession and uh, eventually possession, uh, we don't have to be possessed. If we're obsessed, it's good enough for Satan. He's got us. He's got us. And you can be obsessed uh, with, with all sorts of things. You can be obsessed with you know, pornography. You can be obsessed with uh, revenge, getting back. That's why what uh, Father Greg led in the forgiveness prayer, okay, 
That's a powerful element. No, it's not. No, I, I don't. That person is a son of a gun. That person, uh, as long as you have that, then, you know, things will happen. But when you use forgiveness, you know, you're taking the forgiveness that, you know, uh, Jesus gave us, you know, from the cross. Forgive them, for they do not know. You know, that, that has a power. But to, to begin to see the contrast, you know, on, in one hand, between the inner wound, okay, the inner wound is personal, you know, uh, but the spiritual warfare is directed outward. It's directed outward. You know, we need an object for the spiritual warfare. To be mad at someone, to be angry at someone, to get revenge on someone, to feel I can do this, and you know, it'll give me satisfaction. One man told me, he says, I do drugs because, you know, when I do drugs, the pain goes away. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm involved with this woman. When that happens, I feel somebody loves me. You know, basically, he doesn't love himself. Never will, no matter how many others come into his life. Yeah. So to begin to see uh, spiritualism. You know what spiritualism is? I found out the other day about it. You know, I thought I knew about it, but I didn't. And this lady was talking to her, you know, and she said, you know, um, at Christmas time, my oven went out, my washing machine went out, my uh, garage door opener went out. There were six appliances that went out all at the same time. That's a coincidence, right? What should I do? I said, sell your house. You know. <laughs> said, what were you doing? Oh, I went to this prayer group, you know, and they're very good people. They're all praying. And there's a lady there who's extra special. You know. She has a special gift. She raises people from the dead. And you, you want to know that? No, no. That's spiritualism. That's spiritualism. Mm -hmm. Did she raise anyone from the dead? She did. One person. Who was that person? We don't know. You know. Spiritualism has... Remember? Who was the guy? <coughs> Saul? Saul contacting Samuel? You know, and it's forbidden, forbidden in Scripture, in the Old Testament, and also in the New Testament. That's spiritualism. See, that's what things can, you know, the, the famous thing with uh, Harry Potter, you know, with kids. There's nothing wrong with it. Oh, no. What power are you invoking? What power are you invoking? You know, uh, people who go to, uh, you know, all sorts of different things. They're opening doors, okay? They may be curious, they may be, you know, well, it was a neat experience. I, mean, I, I felt really good. She told me that I would meet a man and that uh, he had, uh, you know, he was into real estate, he owned three houses, and that he would marry me. Again, you know, you're using <coughs> Satan as a... Uh, Father Greg said he doesn't know the future, but he certainly knows the past. He certainly knows how to, you know, use your past against you. So when we're, you know, where, where, we, where is this coming from? Is it coming from an inner wound? And it, when it will, it will sort of make you sad, you know. It will make you feel that, you know, there's a distance between me and God. You know, and that, you know, all that I'm doing is not working, you know. And it may be, it may come from, you know, like uh, this um, woman I know, or, uh, she's, she was in a family of seven, despite what uh, Pope Francis said, it was a good family, you know, and uh, the girl before her, you know, was born, uh, she was a thalidomide baby, you know, what a thalidomide baby, and, uh, this whole side was not developed, okay, and uh, she was the next one conceived in the womb, okay, and then as she was born, and her mother just said, you know, be a good girl. Don't give us problems like your sister is giving us problems. You know? And then at a very young age, she had a, a next-door neighbor began to fondle her. And she cried out for her sister, her older sister. You know, help me, help me, help me, help me. You know? And her older sister 
<coughs> couldn't do anything. She couldn't do anything. <coughs> All her life, she's now 54, she has an unbelievable fear, a paralyzing fear that comes into her. If her husband says something, or if at work something happens, she gets very fearful and protective and try to explain herself away in a way. Why do I come with that paralyzing fear? And it, you know, sometimes I wish I was never. That's an inner vow. But where does it come from? Not the evil one, but it comes from this wound that she has. You know? So, and, and again, uh, what the evil one can use that, can use that. As long as we attend to it, the evil one can't. The door is shut. So to begin to see like things that people get into, and you you can as women in, in this study, in this community actually, will will give you insight into, into situations that that are happening, situations that are happening, and, and many times they go from you know bad to worse. This that gal who was uh, you know. Uh, got hooked up with this man, and she helped him to go to school, get his degree, get his PhD, a doctorate. She moved in with him, everything was fine, and the whole thing. And uh, then he decided, oh, there's another lady. So he left her, uh, she got fired from her job, she went home to live with her mother, her mother kicked her out, she wouldn't have had to do with her, you know, and all of a sudden, she's nowhere, she's nowhere. And her sister said to her, she said, you know, Mom never liked you. Mom never liked you. And she tried to drown you. <coughs> well, don't you remember when you were eight? She kept your head under the water. You thought it was funny, but she was trying to drown you. This, that's the wound. How do you heal that? Only the Lord will heal that. But look what happened to her. You know, she got into a, a relationship which was destructive. Okay, she lost her job because of, you know, the relationship, you know, and it goes on and on and on. She has a daughter now, a daughter who has two children, two different fathers, you know, and the daughter won't come out of the house. She said, we don't have any income to speak of, you know. She says, I'm trying to get it from my ex-boyfriend, you know, because he's a professor. Mm -hmm. So, again, to be aware of the evil, not to be frightened by the evil, not to be overcome. You have power over it. You have power over it because your walk with Jesus Christ, because your commitment to a community, because the, your study of the Word. You have a lot of strengths. You have a lot of power. You have a lot of instruments by which you can you know, take care of either one, either the inner wound or the, uh, or the evil. Okay? More, or more likely, it's the inner wound that is, can be most destructive because... Sometimes you get discouraged, you get depressed, you know, but the uh, other stuff you may find in your family, you know. Somebody said, you know, the two, two uh, brother and a brother-in-law who drifted away from the faith, who drifted away from the faith. Now, how did that happen? It was because of her. No, it wasn't. It's easy to say that. It's easy to say, well, you know, what I'm doing, you know, my family doesn't like it. My family doesn't like it. But what they're doing, you don't like either. <laughs> You know, so to see, you know, who's right? Who's right? You know, well, you know, if you give up that group, you'd be fine. I used to really, I thought you were a fun gal before you joined that group. What kind of fun was it? Was it fun that led you away? Or was it fun that was genuine? You know, so many times, you know, what, what the world throws at us you know, is a spiritual warfare. And you, you have the power. Yeah, and, but to recognize it, to recognize both, is it a wound or is it spiritual warfare? You know, spiritual warfare has something to do with something uh, outside, mostly. So uh, a door that's open, either by making a false, making a false vow, such as uh, the inner vow. Again, but the inner vow comes as an effect. You know, so many times, like. Uh, with, with the, the cold I had, I was taking care of the effects, not the cold, yeah, not the cold, because uh, Mr. Macho knew he could fight the cold. <laughs> so I finally had to go in and 
humbled myself before the doctor and waited an hour and a half for her, never mind. Anyway, to, then she gave me the right thing. Okay? So it's to, to know that you, first of all, that you're on the right track. Number two, that an inner wound is not spiritual warfare. And number three, that the spiritual warfare comes from the evil one. And to be able to recognize it, put your finger on it, because especially it'll be an anti-Christ thing. It'll, be, it'll take you away from God. Okay? And it can be very subtle. Okay? It can be very subtle. You know, it can deal with uh, all sorts of things. Sexuality, it can deal with anger, it can deal with a, a bad self-esteem. You know, I, I'm no good. You know, I'm no good. You know, I, did, I failed at this, I failed at that. So, you know, um, you're asking for, for some other power to help you then. So, you know, I've gone over time. Sorry. Okay. Isn't that solved? Please. <laughs>